Hey, this is Mr. Siebert, and if you don't know me personally, you might not know that I use a wheelchair to get around. I've got a spinal cord injury, and this video is going to explain uh, the physiology behind that injury. So, um, I use a wheelchair to get around every day. Um, I'm in it right now, and my injury, just to give you a sense, uh, is right in here. It's the L2, L3 region of the spinal cord. It's right down there. So if you've ever wondered about the physiology of spinal cord injuries, uh, this will give you some insight into that. Hope you enjoy. The question that I ask my students is this. Mr. Siebert has a spinal cord injury at the L2, L3 vertebrae, which is true. Uh, explain why I have a knee jerk reflex, but I have no motor control of my knee and no feeling in my knee. When I say the knee jerk reflex, think back to a time in, when you've gone to the doctor or you've seen this maybe on TV and they hit your knee with this little, um, little hammer and then the knee jerks. And so that's the knee jerk reflex. And I do have that. If I hit my knee um, by the nerve in, in, in the knee, then uh, my, my leg does have a, have a reflex. But I don't have any motor control, and that's to say that whenever I think about moving my leg, nothing happens. Uh, and I have no feeling in my knee. So if I touch my knee or hit my knee, uh, I don't feel a sensation from that, and I don't feel pain from that. I'm going to start with a picture of the brain. And so I do this brain out. I divide it up into the different lobes, and then I do the spinal cord coming down from that. And if you look on here, I'll draw the folds in the brain. And so we've got our four lobes here, the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe, the cerebellum, and then the spinal cord. And we've learned about these in previous sections of my A&P classes. There's two particular sections that we need to have on here. And the first is the motor control area. And this is part of the frontal lobe. It's in the posterior side of the frontal lobe. Uh, and it's going to be where most of our motor functions start. So whenever I tell my fingers to move or tell my leg to move, that signal is going to start in that section of the brain. And another section that we need to know is the sensory section. The sensory strip is going to be the anterior side of the parietal lobe, and I shaded that in kind of a light green there. And so anytime we feel pain or feel sensation or any of those things, those signals are going to get sent to that part of the brain in the parietal lobe. Also on my diagram here, it's important that I show the different spinal nerves. And so just as a recap of those, first of all, we have the eight cervical nerves. And those are going to come out of the spinal cord in the, in the neck region. We've got eight of those. We've got 12 thoracic nerves, which I'm going to draw coming out of the spinal cord here. Just as we have the thoracic cavity in the superior part of our chest here. We have the lumbar nerves, and there's five of those right there. And then inferior to that, we have the sacral nerves. We have five of those. And we have one nerve called the coccygeal nerve, the very inferior part of the spinal cord. And so we have all of the different sections of the spinal nerves and sections of the spinal cord. My injury is in the L2, L3 section. So if we go down to lumbar and find the second nerve and the third nerve right there, that's where my injury side is. And we'll see that a little bit later in the video. We're going to start with this, the knee jerk reflex. So why do I have that? Why does that work? How does that work? And so I'm going to zoom in on the spinal cord here. And as the video is uh, drawing that, um, we're zooming in right here. And this is what a cross section of the spinal cord looks like. My students will know this is the transverse cross section of the spinal cord. Um, and then this is that L2 or L3 nerve that's coming out of the spinal cord. Also to show this knee jerk reflex, we need to include a picture of the knee and the things that are involved in that. So here's a quick sketch of the knee. And here's the little hammer that the doctor will use um, to strike the knee. And you can see that action happening there. I had fun drawing that. And the first thing that's going to happen is I've got to sense that uh, object striking my knee. And so I'm going to draw a sensory neuron. And it's going to start right here, and a signal will travel whenever that gets struck. Um, this is going to pick up that sensation. It's going to send an action potential, the name of the signal that our nerves send. Uh, it's going to send the action potential up to the spinal cord through the L4 nerve, um, which if we look at a dermatome diagram like my students have seen, we would see that the L4 section, um, or the L4 nerve controls that. Um, and that'll come up through here. And if we zoom in on it, that signal will travel along that sensory neuron to here. Now that signal is going to get passed on through a synapse to a couple of different nerves 
that I drew in blue here. And they're both going to be interneurons, meaning that they connect um, other neurons to each other. This one's going to be part of the reflex arc. This one's going to send a signal up to my brain. And so that signal will then travel up here, up to the sensory part of my brain. So for now, I'm just going to write to the brain to remind myself that's where that's going. And then also, that signal is going to travel through this motor neuron. So travel through the sensory, enter, and then to a motor neuron, out of the spinal cord, back through the L4 nerve. And if we zoom in and look here, that's going to travel down this neuron to a muscle. And so whenever I hit that, hit my knee there, the signal will travel up to the spinal cord and then back through a motor neuron to the muscle in my leg. And that muscle is going to tell my leg to move and my leg will kind of kick out. Now, the other thing that's going to happen in a normally functioning um, spinal cord is that that signal will travel up through the brain. And so I'm going to draw that on the picture now. And we can see that that signal um, is going to travel up through the spinal cord. It's going to be ascending to the sensory part of my parietal lobe, the sensory strip right there. And I'm going to sense that sensation as pain. And that has to get to the brain or else you don't feel that pain or feel that sensation at all. Now, the other thing that a person could do is send a signal from the motor cortex in their brain, and that signal is going to travel down to that muscle. And so I'm going to draw that up here, and you can see a signal will travel down through this motor neuron. And if we zoom in to the spinal cord, this is in the dark blue, that signal will travel down and connect to, um, through a synapse here, to the motor nerve. So I could control, if I had a normally functioning spinal cord, I could control that signal that's going to make it down to the muscle in my knee, and I can move my knee at will, voluntarily. And that's how a spinal cord would work normally. Now, the next thing that we're going to answer is, um, how does my spinal cord affect that? Or how does my injury affect that? So I drew right here um, at L2 and L3 damage to the spinal cord. So I drew just a big gray X there. Um, that's the L2, L3 section. And so first I'm going to answer, why do I have no motor control of my knee? Well, if like an uninjured person, I send a signal from the uh, prior, or sorry, the frontal lobe from that motor strip there, that signal will travel down and you can see those arrows showing the direction of the action potential. It would travel down, but when it gets to that spinal cord injury, no action potentials will be able to continue because of that nerve damage right there. And so, whereas normally that signal would travel down, connect to a motor neuron, and that motor neuron would send a signal to the muscle, for me that can't happen. That signal stops at that L2, um, L3 section. So that's why I have no motor control of my knee. Now I also have no feeling in my knee. So if we start where that sensation occurs, hitting with a hammer or touching with a finger, for example, that signal will travel up the sensory neuron that I have in orange. And it's going to travel up, travel up, travel up, and then connect in the spinal cord. And when it gets to this, the end of the sensory neuron, that's going to send a signal up to my brain. And then also down through the motor neuron. And that motor neuron will travel down through here, excite that muscle, and my leg will kick. But if you look, that injury doesn't affect that reflex arc, right? I was able to send that signal through the sensory neuron and then through a motor neuron, and it never got to that injury site. So I have a functioning knee-jerk reflex. Now, the other thing that happens there is I, I'll send a signal up to the brain. So if, we, if I draw those arrows in, the action potential travels up toward the brain, but then when it gets to the L2, L3 region, um, those signals can't continue. If those signals never get to, get to my sensory region in my brain, then I don't feel any sensation of it. And that's kind of a, an interesting phenomenon that, that a lot of people don't understand is that um, pain or sensation is all sensed in our brain. Um, and if those signals don't make it to the brain, then you won't feel them. You won't experience those signals. So hopefully this was um, helpful in you understanding um, my disability and 
why, um, for example, I have a knee jerk reflex, but I don't have any motor control or feeling in the areas that are controlled by the L2, L3 nerves and below. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.